Okay, I got my bracket out here and socket set. The first thing we got to do is figure out what bolts need to come out for the bracket to be mounted. Now, as we can see, these two bolts holding the alternator on that are those two bolts and then there's the bolt below that just there so let me see here all right so it essentially goes down here i got it figured out now so that bolt down there below the alternator has to come out and then that one right there has come out so that bolt and that bolt and then, okay yeah so that bolt and that bolt are these two bolts and Those are these two bolts. And this, I don't know what that goes to exactly just yet. This one obviously, obviously, uh, goes here, I think, and then these two bolts are to hold on the new alternator. Hmm. All right, let's start assembling and see what we get. So we'll take these bolts out. I got the belt off get this one and this other one out all right then we'll get this one down here and then <laughs> it's hard to do this with my left hand <laughs> all right that's looking good now the new mount comes with two longer bolts to go in those holes now I need to get the alternator itself out of the way, which means I got to get this off, disconnect some wires. And oh yeah, always disconnect your round cable. Yeah, that's not going to happen. It's got to be careful. All right, since this part comes pre-assembled, I'm going to make sure I take a picture of this so that I can figure out how to put it back together again if I can't figure it out. And yes, I did disconnect. The battery from the back and the battery from the, the alternator from the power so I've got it disconnected but I did find that I got one more bolt down here all right I have it sitting in place right now uh, we just one of the bolts started to hold it in place everything was good except this is gonna have to be drilled out I forgot I had seen this in the video so once you get this on here you have to drill this hole out for that second bolt for the second alternator to go in there so i'm gonna have to go in there and uh get the drill and commence to bore in a hole all right after a considerable amount of drilling to get that hole lined up it's hard to get in front of it i got a hole in there that i can work with so now let me see about getting the rest of this assembled The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. The freaks come out at night. Did I change sizes? Oh no, these bolts are different sizes. That's what it is. Okay. The freaks come out at night. Alright. I've just about got the belt figured out here. Well, Figuring it out ain't the problem. It's getting it all, getting it all looped around. It's not exactly where it belongs, but it's really close. It's going around all the correct pulleys and following the correct path, but it's not on in a couple of places. I'm letting my legs rest. So when I get up here, what I have to do is wedge my feet in the hole right there, and then uh, lean over to work and. It works on the back side of my legs. and My old body's not in the shape it used to be. So once I get it just a little bit closer, I'll be able to pull on my wrench over there and uh, slip that 
belt on and we'll be in good shape on that. Them guys on that last push uh, it went so smoothly I, I got down here and I'm like something ain't right. Something's got to be wrong because that went too easy. Like there's no way it's, I gotta get my wrench off of there yet. But it's lined up. It's all grooved. It's lined up there. It's lined up on this one. It's lined up on that one. It's lined up on the crank pulley. Everything, the water pump. The idler pulleys are all... Well, shit, it's on there. Let's see if I can get this off with my weak ass left hand. Not dropping anything. Well, that's the mechanical side of it. And uh, everything is secure, solid. belt's got extremely good tension really good tension I don't have the electrical hooked up yet but that part's the easy part it's just the fun part this was the pain in the ass part son I am very pleased uh, I'm very pleased Excellent. Oh, by the way, guys, if you uh, if you know a snap-on dealer or where one shows up, uh, <laughs> get on the tool truck and buy this damn light right here. It's got a, uh, a USB Type-C charger. It's got a magnet right here. It's got three. It's got two lights. It's got a. It's got a, a laser. There's your laser pointer. It's got this front light right here, and it's got an end light. And uh, I didn't think I was gonna use this thing, but holy crap, it doesn't feel like much. It's really lightweight, but I have used the crap out of this. It has been invaluable in this whole process because I can turn on that front light and then to stick that sucker up under my hood and let me turn off the phone light and show you that's how much light it's dark out here that's how much light it does isn't that awesome I'm telling you guys that's a good little buy right there all right so i got my other rectifier lug on there so that i can do doubles on both now <coughs> I'm still deciding on whether I'm gonna run them separate or together. Uh, one for stock and one for uh, audio or both of them together. And uh, I ain't made up my mind yet. One idea I have and I really like, but is running uh, Two alt gauges from here to here and then running two alt gauges from here through my fuse block back to the back uh, that's kind of what I think I'm gonna run I mean honestly each one of those that alt gauge even uh, at full length will handle 300 amps just a single so two of them will have no problem handling that much power. Uh, especially since I think that other one over there is putting out stock power, maybe a little above. So, and I'm only running it, you know, eight inches. <laughs> a foot, whatever. Uh, so, also going to probably, this is the factory plug here. 
I can't dress it up, unfortunately. I might be able to. Uh, really ain't nothing I can do about it. But I'm going to dress up this one. This is the one wire that powers up the, the GP alternator, the 370 here. And you just connect this to a uh, to an ignition switch, and she's good to go. 14.8 volts, 370 amps, and around 200 amps at idle. And then the factory wire is still on down here. I left it on underneath. So that's the factory plug. So it's still getting its power off this alternator, which it'll be getting power from both because it'll all be connected. But I could isolate this one and just run that one. Like right now, right now, uh, that battery and the back batteries aren't in the circuit, but that battery and that alternator are all hooked up, built on. I could start it up and drive it right now. Uh, so, I could just run power from here to this battery and the back batteries and just run that. Oh, so I could, at any point in time, I could disconnect these two and split the system up. And doing it the way I'm talking about doing it, where I have two little uh, jumpers, that'll enable me to make that change a lot easier in the future if I want to. I think that's exactly what I want to do. I think I'm going to go, I'm going to bridge them together with some little jumpers and then run off of here with two, run through my fuse block, and then run that to the back. I think that's what's going to happen. I may work on these jumpers tonight, uh, but I'm not going to do the rest of it till tomorrow. I may get in there and do the jumpers tonight though, just because, oh, it's going to look good. They're going to get pulled and uh, stuff get added to them, but I might as well train them. Just snug them down. I tried the straight across thing, I didn't like it, so I made them a little longer so that I could have a curve to it. I don't know why, but I think it's gonna work out better. Thinking I'll have these other ones kinda of come off this way and go. Uh, but yeah, 